Did you know that your birth chart holds the key to understanding your health physically, mentally, and even spiritually? In medical astrology, the houses in your birth chart reveal important information about how your body functions, your health challenges, and how to heal. While all of the houses play an important role in shaping your health, there are four in particular that are extra potent in medical astrology. In this video, we're gonna cover the most important health houses, the first house, sixth house, eighth house, and 12th house. These houses offer crucial insights into your constitution, your daily health habits, your deepest traumas, and even how you rest and recover. Whether you're looking to prevent illness or understand the emotional roots of your health struggles, your birth chart offers a personalized roadmap to vitality. Stay tuned because we're about to uncover how these medical astrology health houses can guide you toward a healthier, more aligned life. And if you're ready to dive even deeper into medical astrology, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you never miss any of my tutorials here on YouTube. And don't forget to grab your free medical astrology 101 quick reference guide at the link down in the description below. This 19 page guide is absolutely packed with everything you need to know to master the zodiac signs, the planets, and the houses from a health and wellness perspective. It's your perfect foundation for understanding medical astrology and taking back control of your well being. And if you want to go even deeper to use medical astrology, to optimize your health habits based on your unique astrological blueprint, make sure you check out my Celestial Vitality workshop down at the link in the description below. This is a low cost, very comprehensive overview of the seven key health indicators in your birth chart and how to use these indicators to find the best diet, the, the best exercise routine, the best self-care habits that can help you not just survive, but thrive. Again, the link is down in the description below for that. All right, so let's dive even deeper into these medical astrology houses. So we all know about our big three in astrology, which are our sun sign, our moon sign, and our rising sign. But did you know that the rising sign or the ascendant is also very important to your health? The first house and the ascendant represent your physical self, your physical body, and even your appearance. The first house shows your unique constitution. The sign that occupies the first house can indicate through its correspondence to different body areas, different organ systems or places in the body that might be emphasized for good or for bad. Whether that emphasis is more positive or more challenging depends on what planets you have aligned with the ascendant or in your first house. It also depends on the planetary ruler of the first house and the chart ruler. But in general, the first house is one of the first places you're going to want to look when it comes to the physical body, because the first house describes your physical body, not just through your health, but through your physical appearance and your physical attributes. And as you already may know, the different zodiac signs are associated with different body areas and different organ systems from the head down to the toes with starting with Aries and going all the way down to Pisces. And so looking at your rising sign and looking at the emphasis that body area that's associated or the multiple body areas and organ systems that are associated with your rising sign can give you a clue into an area that's increased in its sensitivity and its importance. It's very important for you to support the body areas that are associated with your ascendant sign. For example, if you're in Aries rising, Aries rules the head and the eyes, the optic nerve, it's everything, the upper jaw and above. And so those are areas that you're gonna want to support, you're gonna wanna give extra care to. Taurus is you know, the lower jaw, the throat, uh, the thyroid, so those are areas if you're a Taurus rising that you're going to want to pay closer attention to and support a little bit more heavily. Gemini is the lungs, the respiratory system, the arms, the shoulders. It's tied in with certain parts of the nervous system. And so those are all areas you would want to support a little bit more for Gemini rising. And then if you go into Cancer rising, Cancer rules the breasts, it rules the stomach, it rules all of the mucous membranes and the protective sacs in the body, it rules the reproductive organs in women. And so again, these are all things that you're going to want to support a little bit more if you are a Cancer rising. Leos are the heart, the spine, the thymus, again, all things that you're going to want to support a little bit more so if you're a Leo rising. 
And then we have Virgo, which is the intestines, the spleen. Um, it co-rules the liver with Sagittarius, all things you're going to want to support. It co-rules the nervous system with all of the other mutable signs. So you're going to want to make sure that you're doing things to support the health and the balance of your nervous system if you're a Virgo rising. If you are a Libra rising, Libra is the all of the homeostatic systems in the body, including the general significator of the endocrine system. It rules the kidneys, and the kidneys have to do with the water and electrolyte balance, among many other things in the body. And so again, all things you're going to want to support if you are a Libra rising. If you're a Scorpio rising, Scorpio rules the excretory systems of the body. It rules the genitals, it rules the anus, it rules the colon. So basically every place where things go out but they don't necessarily come back in. It's the cervix in women. It also is tied to the sinuses and the nose through its rulership with Mars. So again, all things you're going to want to support more heavily if you are a Scorpio rising. Sagittarius, as we probably already know, rules the liver, but it also rules the lower back and sacrum. It rules the butt, it rules the thighs. And so again, all things you're gonna to wanna to support and because it's a mutable sign, it's also tied in with the nervous system. You're gonna to wanna to support that if you have a Sagittarius rising sign. Um, if you are a Capricorn rising, that's bones, joints, ligaments, hair, skin, nails, teeth, all of those things you're gonna to wanna to support if you are a Capricorn rising. Aquarius rising rules the electrical systems within the body and the ankles, the Achilles tendon, the lower legs, um, the, uh, the circulatory system. So whereas Leo is the heart, the circulatory system is more so ruled by Aquarius. Again, all things you're gonna to wanna to support if you're an Aquarius rising. And then Pisces doesn't just rule the feet, although take good care of your feet if you are a Pisces rising. <laughs> it also is the co-ruler of the immune system with Virgo, and it rules the lymphatic system, which plays a huge role in our immune system and our overall health and well-being. It's one of the um, immune system parts of the body, and it's also a part of the body that's associated with certain types of detox and detoxification. And so so you're going to want to support lymphatic drainage and the health of your lymphatic system if you have a Pisces rising. So hopefully that kind of gives you um, a general idea of where those sensitivities and those emphasis will lie. The way that it's emphasized is going to depend solely on, again, the planetary energies there, whether they're positive, negative, uh, challenging, supportive. Um, what does that whole pattern and that whole picture look like? This is something that we discuss in a lot more detail in Celestial Vitality, the workshop that I'm teaching on September 21st. And of course, we go so deep into all of the astrological houses in my Medical Astrology Foundations course, which is level one of my Cosmic Wellness Academy. Enrollment for that, you can find information for down in the description below. Um, we do like an hour long video on the first house alone. So we're not gonna cover everything in this short YouTube video, um, but we're gonna give you enough so that way you can get started. You'll know enough to be dangerous as they say. <laughs> So not only is the first house the identity and the physical body, um, your physical appearance, your physical form, it's also the general state of your body um, along with your constitution and your overall resiliency against disease. That's one of the first places I look to see if somebody has a strong constitution, if they tend to be very healthy and vital, or if they tend to be a little weaker, a little bit more prone to illness, a little bit more fatigued, a little bit um, harder when it comes to their recovery. This is gonna be shown through a combination of different factors in the chart, but the first house is always my starting point. The energy of the elements of the sign that rules your first house, that's gonna tell a lot about resiliency as well. The fire signs tend to be very resilient. Uh, the earth signs also tend to have a higher level of resiliency. The air signs a little less so, and the water signs the least. But this isn't the only thing you look at. So if you have a water sign ascendant, that doesn't mean that you're gonna be weak and sickly. Um, there are a whole different pattern of different things that you're gonna be looking at in your birth chart to determine that fully. This is just your starting point.
The first house also shows your resiliency against environmental influences as well as astrological influences, planetary influences. Are you more easily able to bounce back from different planetary configurations, different transits that hit you in certain ways? Or is it a little bit harder for you? Are you more affected by these things? All of these answers can lie within the first house and by looking at the ruler of the first house as well. And beyond the first house, showing your health more more generally, the first house also has a lot to do with your birth story. We come in to this incarnation through our ascendant sign. It is the birth canal. It is our birth story. A lot can be shown there. So if there was a complication with your birth story, with your birth situation, if there were complications shortly before, during, or after birth, those things can show up in the first house. For example, a very common one you'll see is Saturn in the first house children being born either prematurely or like super late, like way past their due date, and maybe they need to be induced or something along those lines. A lot of these different factors can show up by looking at your ascendant. It tells that story in a big way because it's a part of how you came into this world and so is the ascendant. And because of this, if there are health issues with the first house in particular, they tend to show up shortly after birth or early on in life. Now the sixth house provides essential information about nutrition, eating habits, exercise routines, and health routines in general. It's also the house of illness. And so if your sixth house has a lot of difficulty, if there's a lot of difficult planetary energy there, it can indicate being more prone to certain types of illnesses. But because the sixth house is the house of health habits and health routines, what I've actually found in working with clients is that the types of illnesses that come up through the sixth house typically can be resolved through health routines, through changes in your habits, through diet, through exercise, through taking better care of your health or through changing your diet or your exercise or your self-care habits in some way. Lifestyle factors can play a huge influence, especially the lifestyle factors that you're enacting day in and day out when it comes to illnesses in the sixth house and just illnesses mostly in general, right? Like not all illnesses are genetic or predetermined. Most of them are due to the choices that we make, the lifestyle that we lead, or the environmental influences that we're exposed to on a more regular basis. And so that's what you're gonna see more so than not when it comes to the sixth house. The sixth house is also really important when evaluating a chart for medical astrology because it shows you what a person will and will not do. <laughs> so what are they willing to do and what are they not willing to do to maintain and improve their health? What habits will they stick with and what habits will they not stick with? A good example of this would be if somebody has Uranus in the sixth house and no other placements that would be contrary to this Uranian energy, they tend to need a lot of excitement, a lot of change. They don't want to do the same thing day in and day out. And so if you're trying to get somebody with a Uranian influence in their sixth house to do a very regimented, disciplined, very um, monotonous health routine, like they're gonna go exercise and do this many reps in this way, the same way, every single day, they're not going to do it. <laughs> that doesn't mean that they don't have the discipline to actually go in and exercise, and it doesn't mean they can't enjoy exercise, but they need to be able to do what they want to do when they want to do it. They need to shake things up. They need to be doing things that are exciting and different and new, and that's going to be a part of it. Whereas people maybe with mercury in the sixth house, they need to be doing physical activity that engages their mind, that they have to think about. It can't be repetitive to the point where they don't have to think about it in its second nature. They need to exercise their mind while they're exercising their body. So looking at the sixth house and the planets in the sixth house can give you clues as to what types of activities they will thrive at and they'll actually stick with. Looking at that obviously in combination with uh, Mars because Mars is the ruler of fitness and physical activity too. And this is the house of nutrition. So you can see what a person needs or doesn't need when it comes to their diet by looking at the sixth house. And yes, the sixth house is very tied in with food and food choices. The second house doesn't really do that. <laughs> That's a whole other topic in and of itself. But if you're looking at like dietary recommendations, if you're looking at honing in on the right wellness plan for yourself and your body, the sixth house is key. That's where you're going to 
to want to be looking. And of course, we're going to discuss this more in detail in Celestial Vitality. So make sure you join us for that workshop down in the description below. Um, but you know, it's a good starting point is to just look at your sixth house, evaluate it. What sign is there and what does that represent? Um, you know, what planets are there? What do those planets represent? That type of thing. It can also show your eating habits and your routines pertaining to meals. I talked a lot about this in another video I did about sixth house signs. So you can check that out after this if you want to get detailed information. But basically it'll show you if you're a fast eater, if you eat on the go, if food is more of a social event for you, if it's more of a comfort event for you, if it's something that you pertain in to, you know, eat through your emotions versus if you're somebody who just eats food for fuel and just wants to get it over with and move on. Because <laughs> there are people who are like that too. And so all of these things can be shown by the sixth house sign and also planets in the sixth house. Again, I have a whole video on that topic for you. And just like it shows your eating habits as an adult, it shows nursing habits in infants. And so if you have a little baby who is having trouble with like nursing, nursing and with eating and all of that, look at their sixth house, see what's there. That's going to give you a lot of information. And I should also mention that the sixth house is also tied with stress induced conditions. I've seen that time and time again. If you have a lot of difficult energy in your sixth house, it usually represents having to go through difficult, stressful experiences day in and day out because it is the house of our day-to-day -day routines, health or otherwise. And because it's tied also to our health, there is an overlap there. And so if you're going through stressful situations every single day and you're not having an outlet for that, or you're not having a good way to rest on the opposite side of the 12th house, which we'll talk about, if you're not having a good way to relieve that stress, then that's going to lead to illness and disease. And so the sixth house is not just diseases of like food and nutrition and diet. It's all of your daily habits and all of your health habits. And so if you see um, a lot of really challenging energy in the sixth house and you are somebody who is stressed out all the time because you're just constantly being thrown crazy difficult situations day in and day out that's a cause for concern that's where you need to focus your intentions and focus your effort you have to make space in your day-to-day -day life to decompress to restore and replenish your nervous system to make sure that that stress does not reverberate into your physical health so the eighth house is a house that you might not suspect being tied to health and to wellness but it is the eighth house is where our deepest fears, our deepest anxiety, our traumas lie. And it's very tied into our psychological health, but it's also tied into medical conditions or physiological illnesses that have traumatic or emotional or psychological origins. Often what you'll see with eighth house activations involving illness is that there is something going on there that is psychological or emotional that could be tied to that physiological illness. And so that's something that absolutely needs to be looked at and absolutely needs to be addressed. Now, when it comes to mental health and psychiatric issues, you'll often see eighth house coming up. The eighth house is most commonly implicated in obsessive compulsive disorders, in PTSD, anxiety disorders, but it's also very heavily implicated in certain types of addictions, especially what I've seen is that the eighth house is heavily associated with addictions to stimulants, whereas the 12th house is addictions to drugs that you use to numb out, to disconnect from reality, to alter your perception of consciousness in a way that is more detached. And kind of going back to that tie between the eighth house trauma and physiological symptoms and complaints. When you hold on to toxicity in the mind psychologically, even if it's unconscious, that can breed toxicity and illness and difficulties in the body. We know through modern research that past trauma, past abuse, difficult experiences in childhood increase your likelihood of all sorts of different mental and physiological diseases and also increase your likelihood of all cause mortality. There is a real scientific connection there. And so this isn't something to take lightly. 
While that being said, this is where you can focus your attention. So if you know you have a stacked up eighth house and you've had a lot of really difficult, challenging, traumatic experiences in your life, working through those traumas, working through those anxieties, working through those past emotions through therapy or through other means of healing can be healing to you, not just mentally, not just psychologically, not just psychically, but physically as well. And so this can be a very regenerative house. It's where you get to the very deep deepest core of all of your issues and that reverberates into everything else in your life. It's a house of empowerment. What I've seen from clients and students who have strong eighth house placements is that they tend to be very gifted healers as well. And especially they tend to be very gifted diagnosticians. They're very good at honing in on the core issue, the hidden stuff that is beneath the surface that other people might not look at. Um, this is why the eighth house is strongly tied to research and detective work and things like that. These are people that are not afraid to look at things that are scary, that are a little bit difficult, that other people might shy away from, which is also part of that connection to the eighth house being the house of death. And yes, the eighth house is tied to real actual death and the significations of the eighth house are definitely a part of that. One of the things you'll see when it comes to illnesses that have that eighth house connection is that sometimes they cause you to have to face the idea of your own mortality. It's not necessarily that if you have the eighth house activated at the onset of a disease that you're going to die. That's definitely not the case. That's usually not the case. However, it will get you thinking about those things or there could be a fear brought up around death when it comes to those types of illnesses. The eighth house I've often seen very active when it comes to surgeries. So surgical procedures show up a lot of times in the eighth house and not just surgical procedures, but things where you're kind of cutting into the body and exposing something. So like biopsies and things like that, you'll find with the eighth house as well. And so that is the eighth house and moving on to the 12th house. The 12th house is so important in medical astrology. This is the house of rest and restorative time, which is crucial to your body's health, your sleep, your sleep quality, and your ability to revitalize yourself, your body's ability to revitalize itself during during sleep. That is all in the 12th house. If you have difficult energy, difficult placements in the 12th house or placements like Mars or Uranus that indicate sleeplessness or restlessness, that's going to impact the way your body rejuvenates, replenishes, restores, and heals. The 12th house is also the opposite side of the sixth house. It's in the opposite placement in the birth chart. And the sixth house is the health house. A lot of sixth house issues reverberate into the 12th and you can find a lot of energy around illness, especially illnesses that lead to seclusion, isolation, prolonged periods of being solitary or hospitalization, rehabilitation. All of these things are 12th house topics. And so that's where you're going to want to look for those types of situations that arise as a result of illness. Spiritual well-being and mental health are also shown in the 12th house. The 12th house is the most hidden, most secretive, most transcendent of the houses. It's very tied in with our unconscious and subconscious realities. It's very tied in with things like spirituality and spiritual practices. And so our spiritual health and our spiritual well-being can be shown by looking at the 12th house. And just like the 8th house, the 12th house is often very strongly implicated when it comes to mental health issues. It's probably the second most common house that you'll see being lit up in a chart that is for somebody who has psychiatric illness. And so this is a factor that you're going to want to look into. Dissociative types of disorders, um, schizophrenia, different things where you're disconnected from reality, those types of psychiatric illnesses, those types of psychological illnesses, they tend to show up more in the 12th house. And like I mentioned before, the 12th house is very tied in with addictions, but it's more tied in with addictions that are resulting from a desire to detach from physical reality. Whereas the eighth house is more obsessive, compulsive. It's a little bit more stimulating. The 12th house is more like wanting to just numb out, wanting to disconnect, wanting to experience altered states in some way. That's going to be the type of addiction you'll see with 12th house. You'll see a lot of opiate abuse in the 12th house. You'll see um, alcohol abuse and things like that. 
And like I said before, this is also the house that rules rehabilitation centers. And so if somebody goes to rehab, that is a 12th house experience. That's a 12th house situation. The 12th house is also a house that's tied in with our past lifetimes and how they influence us unconsciously. And so it's often said that illnesses that originate for the 12, from the 12th house or have a connection to the 12th house have some sort of connection to our past lifetimes and our past lifetime experience. So maybe something unresolved from a previous lifetime that's impacting our bodies in the present moment. And finally, I should mention that planets in the 12th house are often said to be hidden, secluded, and weakened in some way. And that can correspond to weaknesses involving the functions, the activities, the bodily um, physiology that is connected to those planetary energies. And so if you have a planet in the 12th house, that planet can be weakened just by being in the 12th house, which is technically a malefic house. And by that planet being in the 12th house, everything medical astrology that's associated with that planet could also be prone to weakness. And so that's a really good place, a really good starting point to look at for areas that you can support in your body. For example, if you have the sun in the 12th house, the sun is the function of your heart, you might wanna work on your cardiovascular health. Also, the sun in the 12th house usually indicates you're not getting enough sunlight and vitamin D, so make sure you're doing that too. <laughs> All of these things can be shown there, and I have a whole video about planets in the 12th house for you to check out after this. It's floating around up here. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know it was short, sweet, concise, and to the point. If you want a deep, deep dive into medical astrology, if you want to understand all of the health houses and beyond, make sure you check out my Medical Astrology Foundations course. Each of these houses gets at least 40 minutes to an hour of just that, plus a whole lesson where we put it all together and you learn how to use this in a medical astrology reading. This is where you're gonna learn to not just understand the foundations and all the sig significations, but how to put it all together to actually give medical astrology readings. Again, that information is below. Check out Social Vitality, download the Medical Astrology 101 guide, that is free, and I will see you in the next video. Bye everyone.